Hi everybody, good after news. I'm Andy Murray from What Culture, and I'm Adam Nicholas from What Culture, and good after news as well. We're here to bring you more news because you haven't had enough news, it would seem. And we'll start off with Rusev, and I can't remember the exact wording and why he's been <laughs> removed from WWE television. I'm going to tell you all about the controversial angle that AEW seem to be abandoning. Oh, and New Japan could be planning a show, another one at Madison Square Garden. This is the good after news. Da, 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 da. That's not what we do. Da, 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 da. News coaster. That one yes. as well. That one's Meow. that one's kicking around somewhere. Good times. Well, let's kick things off with a little bit of a chat about Matt Riddle. Uh, we. I think got... you mean. Matthew Riddell. Sorry, Matthew Riddell and Peter Dune. Peter Dune. <laughs> um, we got a little scoop here from Dave Meltzer in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Mm. So obviously, Matt Riddle's name has been in the press a lot lately. He had that little kerfuffle with uh, Brock Lesnar at the Royal Rumble, and then there was all talks of backstage heat and using that as an example of what not to do at the PC. All kinds of stories. Yeah. Today, Big Daddy Dave, the swollest man in wrestling journalism, Simon Miller aside, uh, has come through with an update on what Vince McMahon really thinks of Matthew Riddell. Ooh. He says, basically, Vince doesn't appreciate the original bro. He sees him as an outside figure. And because this guy's going around, he's challenging the Goldbergs, the Brock Lesnar's, people who want nothing to do with him. Matt Riddle, the outside guy, doesn't respect the hierarchy of mm. pro wrestling. That's a pretty damning statement. Uh, but on top of this, uh, Melter also adds that because Brock isn't very fond of Mr. Riddell, uh, that kind of trickles up to Vince. Brock has a lot of sway with Vince. So if Brock don't like you, there's a good chance that Vince doesn't like you either. So, well, Mr. Riddell's, I'm, I need to stop saying that. Well, Matthew's, I like it, I like it. Well, Matthew's uh, transgressions haven't been reflected in his booking patterns in NXT. He's still being presented very well, and the Brozoweight's going to challenge for the tag team titles. He's doing good. Despite what has happened, uh, this is not the best sounding news, is it? Bro, I mean, I always knew this was going to be the case. Whether or not Vince McMahon, is, this all depends on whether Vince saw that as him being a go-getter. Someone he sees as being like mixing it up, not afraid of anybody, quite masculine, like getting in people's faces. Or, which is probably always going to be the case, Vince is a man of tradition. There's a hierarchy. Wrestling, you don't go at the top unless someone says you go at the top. Yeah. And all the stuff he's done in that regard doesn't matter, I guess, in Vince's eyes. But more importantly, the only question I've really got to ask you, Andy Murray, is how much fish could Bobby Fish fry if Bobby Fish could fry fish? <laughs> how much fish could Bobby Fish fry if Bobby Fish could fry fish? That's the only question yeah. that should be on anyone's mind when it comes to Matt Riddle. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my only question is how the hell did he get that Brozerweight mobile cleared for action? Incredible stuff. Two weeks in a row now. We had a bloody tank the first week. This, this, this whoa, time. Whoa, a bloody great tank. A bloody great tank, nice. sorry. Uh, what was it say on the front? TCB. Yeah. Taking care of business. Uh, nice. Uh, and yeah. then we had the Brozerweight mobile. What are we going to have next week? What are we going to have next Velveteen week? Dream's going to have some sort of wacky, he is, isn't he? wacky car. A wacky, like, a wha whoa, whoa, whoa. No, like <laughs> What I mean is like wacky races where he just has to pedal with his feet. His feet are the, like, he goes like that. <laughs> who, is, who is Velveteen Dream's Motley in that case? Exactly. Oh, that's a good point. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. I can't do I'm not that. Sure. I feel like I'm nearly killing myself doing yeah. that. Shall we move on? Yeah, let's. Shall we move on? Let's talk about, it's the afternoon news here. Hey. We do things a little bit differently around here where you just chuck the news out and see where it lands. Speaking of which, Rusev, as you may have noticed, he hasn't really been on WWE television. Now, we reported earlier this week that that was because the creative don't actually have anything for Rusev. But according to Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer, guess who dropped all this news today? Might have just been him, mightn't it? what happens when the newsletter comes out. It comes like out later on, on a Friday, yeah. yes, of course. Come on, Dave. Come on, Dave, speed it up, pal. Stop lifting, start grifting or something. <laughs> that's anyway, exactly what he does. That's exactly what he does. Um, basically... <laughs> The, the real reason, another real reason, why Rusev isn't on TV, obviously <laughs> there's nothing for him, but there's nothing for him because apparently he is embroiled in contract dispute talks, contract dispute talks, that'll do, with WWE over, presumably, his contract, <laughs> of course, as you'd imagine. Now, we're being told this isn't obviously going well, hence the reason he's literally not appeared at all, and maybe also the reason why he hasn't been getting any traction why, like in terms of victories or anything in this feud with Bobby Lashley and the reason why at the Royal Rumble they were scheduled to have the match and then it got removed. Yeah. So things aren't looking too... How many times have we said this? 
things aren't looking too good for Rusev at the moment. Yeah. Rusev, it's every single month, isn't know, it? There's it's something. literally every Rusev month. Rusev might leave WWE. Rusev's upset. Rusev did this on Twitter. Rusev, 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 Rusev. This time it might actually be real. And, and the more down the rabbit hole you go with this, depending on how long it's been going on, is this why we've been getting such a push for Lashley and Lana for so long? Yeah. Because, like, that is... That's a man's wife they're messing with there, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Like, He's screwing with someone else's wife. Literally, Bobby Lashley. Literally, yeah. You need to behave, Robert. Robert. Um, yeah, that, I Bob mean... Bob Lash. Bob Lash. We heard earlier this year that WWE were making re-signing Rusev a top priority. So, from that, we can kind of guess that his contract is probably up relatively soon. So, this does stack up. However, like we've just said, it's the Rusev news we've heard so many times before, mm. I think it's best to kind of keep stories like this at arm's length with a guy because you don't really know for sure. Is it the case of Boy Who Cried Wolf? Isn't it? Not that it's yeah. his fault at all, I just mean it, it happens so often yeah. that one of these days is going to be true, but right now it just feels like another one on the roundabout. Tell you what, mate, we can, uh, we can take it as fact when he shows up somewhere else. This guy. As like this guy. a mad Russian yeah. or something. Like NWA Power? Yeah. Eh? Is that what he's going to be? Oh, he'd be quite good in that, Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. 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 Swerve them and go to them instead yeah. of AEW. The he's Bulgarian. not going to do that. No. They're going to offer him loads of money in AEW. The Bulgarian bulldozer or something. You know, All right. Yeah. Never was there a good time to move on to a yeah. next news story it's than right crap banter, this, now. Isn't it? uh, let's start. Let's it's start. late in the day. Leave it's very late in the day. My work day ends in 45 oh, minutes. No. Uh, our next story. Our next story comes. Guess who? Guess who's the source? It's Dave Meltzer, Wrestling hey. Observer Newsletter. Although this is more of an observation than a story. And you might have even picked up on this yourselves because you're all very observant viewers. Wrestling Observer, some might even call hey, it. Hey, there you go. You observe wrestling like Dave. <laughs> Basically, the Nightmare Collective. It looks oh, God. very much like the most maligned stable in the AEW is over. A lot of signs contribute to this. On Dark this week, we saw a singles match match between Mel and Hikaru Shida. <laughs> Mel lost. Kong was furious. Awesome Kong. She uh, got in Mel's face. Dr. Luther was involved. The Nightmare Collective beat her down, they wrote her off. Uh, Kong was said to have suffered serious injuries according to AEW social media in the aftermath. Now we know that this is because Kia Stevens, the actress who plays uh, Awesome Kong on AEW television, is going away to film the next season of GLOW. Of course. But it was also quite a clear split from her and the Nightmare Collective. It's not the only sign though. This week's therapy session, which was replayed, it was first broadcast on social media, and it was replayed on Dark, uh, suggested that Brandy realises maybe she's getting better. Hmm, and then on Dynamite, as Cody was taking the lashings, Brandy came out, which is notable in itself because they were split on television. <coughs> Cody said, hey, I'm not going to be managed by uh, Brandy anymore. And then Brandy went off the goddamn rails. So not only did she appear during the lashing segment, mm. she had no Nightmare Collective crap on. She was just dressed business suit Brandy. And she helped Cody, she spurred him to his feet for that final lashing. All of these add up to suggest that maybe the Nightmare Collective, which hasn't been great. It's been a nightmare, mate. <laughs> has, it has indeed. Uh, maybe it's over. I think this is for the best. If this is indeed where we're going with this, I think everybody collectively, even though, like you want to see these things tried. I, I, I will say that. I, I'd like to see a company we can't just complain because they gave it a go because how many times have WWE right. tried something, given up on it immediately and we've been like, why didn't they just run yeah. with it? So, you know, credit <laughs> to them for at least trying it. It hasn't worked and at least they're potentially acknowledging that now and hopefully everybody involved can kind of wipe the stain off and yeah. move on the directions they're supposed to go in. Fingers crossed. Yeah, absolutely. It's a shame. Uh, it is a shame. It's mm. always a shame when yeah. things don't work on wrestling TV. Hopefully Brandy Rhodes as performer can realign and find something else that she maybe is better suited to. Uh, Kong, I would like to see Kong back. Hopefully she'll be back. Um, I am happy to see her going into the next season of Glow though, I have to be Absolutely, honest. absolutely. She's a very successful person away from the ring and by all counts one of the nicest people of all time. She well. seems like a nice so, person, you know. Yeah. I think that, that's the... You get the gist from her acting range as well. Yeah. They see more of it in Glow, which tells me that she's really good at acting like a nasty, nasty badass. Just a monster, On TV, yeah. really good yeah. stuff. Let's move from AEW over to New Japan Pro Wrestling, because as some of you may be aware, New Japan are always trying to find new ways to kind of try and break into the American scene. Obviously, we saw last, was it last year, they did the G1 Supercard, and it was a raging success. Really, really good stuff. And apparently <coughs> that has given them some impetus. We also, we literally saw them do their show at Madison Square Garden last year over WrestleMania weekend, which was fantastic. I have never seen this man happier, earnestly happy in my real 
actual fake life. life. Genuinely, genuinely lovely to see. Well, you're in luck, my friend, because it seems like they could be potentially planning another big Madison Square Garden show in 2020. Now, this again comes from Uncle Dave over at the Wrestling Observer. Thank you, Dave. You literally keep us in the job, <laughs> my friend. Um, but basically, we don't have any exact plans on this. Nothing is confirmed or definite, but August 2020 is being mentioned as a potential date for when they could be set to put this show on. Now, Andy Murray, we, we saw the show in Madison Square Garden, obviously with the G1 supercar being such a big hit. This is obviously a formula for success, right? You'd, well, well. Success. Well. Oh, okay, let me rephrase that. Success financially is one thing. We'll talk yeah. about that. And success about how much we'd enjoy it if they did Madison yeah. Square Garden. Absolutely. Critical, like, creatively, critically, yes. match quality-wise, you know it's going to slap, yeah. right? They're going to put big matches on that card because they'd have to to fill that building this time mm -hmm. around. Um, although business-wise, this is a really interesting story, I think, because you look at that last card, it sold out in under an hour, right? Mm -hmm. The thing about that card is, though, it was taking place over WrestleMania weekend, which has the concentration of basically every hardcore wrestling fan alive. So you have an instant advantage there. People yep. don't have to travel specifically to New York. They're already there. Hey, the G1 Climax, uh, the G1 Supercard is yeah. happening. I'm going to get myself a ticket for that. That sounds awesome. Uh, the second point is that when the last G1 Supercard was announced, it was mid-2018 or summer 2018. Who was still there? You're looking at the major US draws of New Japan. Cody, the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, all under contract. People yep. might have bought those tickets going, hey, I'm going to see Kenny Omega in Madison Square Garden. That is awesome. But by the time 2018 trickled into 2019, those guys were gone. Bye -bye. So now, obviously they sold those tickets by then, so it yep. didn't really affect things in that regard. But now, in 2020, at a time when New Japan's American business is kind of stalling at best. At worst, it's actually receding. Knock, knock, knock. Uh, that's your third point there. There's plenty of reasons to be a little bit cynical about its chances of success, mm. but it would be so cool, wouldn't it? Like it would. another New Japan show in the, like what they call it, the world's most famous arena. Well, it's awesome. It really is like, I'm not usually want to buy into sort of someone's sales pitch, but we went and it was, it took me aback, and that doesn't ever really happen in stadiums. It happened when I went to Dallas in the big um, Cowboy Stadium. Yeah. It was such a coliseum of a place. But that, it's got a different vibe to it, man. It's really quite something. And yeah. the one thing, of course, here is that we had Ring of Honor sort of took half the, well, I say half the cards, you know what I mean? They split it across, yeah. which did certainly bring in both sets of audiences. It would be fascinating to see, though, if they could do it without. Like, could, could is yeah. that feasible? Could, could they feasibly do it just based on the strength of their own roster, do you think? It's an interesting one, because Ring of Honor's business and their attendances have absolutely it's, plummeted yeah. in recent years, so... There's a growing feeling that New Japan don't need Ring of Honor for their US business anymore. However, if you look at the shows uh, New Japan ran in America last week, they got no buzz. They weren't even on yeah. New Japan World. Uh, they may have been uploaded by now, I haven't quite checked. But like, they were half empty buildings, they were underwhelming cards. It's so tough to forecast how this thing mm. would do. But you know, they're not gonna mail the card in. They're gonna put Okada on top, or they're gonna put Naito on top. They're gonna big matches. They're gonna be big boy matches for a yeah. big boy show. Let's see what happens, man. I hope they get it right. I hope really they get do, it right. That'll too. be banging show. Sure. Anyway, thank you for joining us on this oh, good afternoon. We've very much enjoyed spending our time with you today. That's that the was right really setting. nice, wasn't it? That was honestly hey, nice. Look at that. From a bad guy like me. Hey. A villain, hey, yo. if you will. <laughs> hey, yo. I'm going to spit my toothpick out. Anyway, thanks for joining us. Follow mm. us on Twitter at WellCultureWWE. Hashtag This Is The News. You can find Adam Nicolage on Twitter at Hashtag Good After News. You can find me on hey. Twitter at It's Adam Nicolage. You can find this lovely, earnest, happy man on Twitter at Andy H. Murray. The H stands for Have A Nice Weekend. Oh, you yeah, softy. slugs. Love it. There it is. Yes, slugs. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Enjoy your weekend. Basta.